Okay, so we've got Mr. Crockett here, and we had him along for the muskrat hunt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some training for Bindi. Uh, we're gonna let Crockett go. Hopefully, he will travel down the canal for a long ways before he gets distracted and tries to go up somewhere else. The hope is he'll travel for a long ways along the canal. And then when either he's gone far enough or he's clearly wanting to go somewhere that we don't want him to go, we'll call him to this little trap and then we'll hide the trap somewhere uh, and then we'll ask Bindi to find it. So what we're gonna do is when Bindi finds the mink, we're gonna reward her with what's called a roll cage. Um, pretty simple, we put the muskrat inside the roll cage and we screw it shut. And the reason it's in a cage, I mean, it's a dead animal. Why do we have a dead animal in the cage? She doesn't realize it's dead. Well, she might realize it's dead, but it's gonna move enough that it'll excite her, even though it's dead, let's put it that way. Now, I could have the muskrat on a string and have her chase it, but it doesn't seem to excite her as much as what we're about to do. And I'll show you what that is uh, while we're doing it. I'm putting it in the backpack here, so she's not being teased as we walk along, seeing the cage and the muskrat and wanting it. So this is basically to conceal the muskrat and the cage from her. That's the purpose of the backpack. And conveniently, it also makes it easier to carry. So the reason we're putting this harness on her is twofold. Number one, I want her to learn to track with the harness and without, because there are times when for safety reasons you need to have the dog in a harness it's good to get her used to that so putting the harness on doesn't totally throw her off and have her all confused wondering what the what's the deal with the harness so we're also going to be using the harness for when we get the roll cage out and we're rewarding her and you'll see how we do that in just a minute
Okay, girl. Okay, girl. Hard at it, get dog. Okay, girl. Hard at it, get girl. Okay, girl, yeah. Hard at it, get girl, yeah. Okay, girl. Yeah, yeah right, good girl, yeah. yeah. Okay, girl, yeah. Yeah, good girl, yeah. yeah. So the movement, it helps to give the appearance of being alive, which as you can see, drives her completely nuts. The reason I have her on a harness, rather than letting her, see because she'll run this all around if I just let her. See I don't need the harness to get it to move. But if I do that for very long, she'll sore up her nose. Dogs' noses are pretty tender. And even this nice, perfectly round wire will rub her nose raw in a short amount of time. So rather than just letting her run it around like that, I save her nose and roll it myself and just hold her back, which actually increases her drive and desire to get the muskrat. And this is all good because this is her reward for finding the mink. Because she can't kill the mink, we let her basically get a reward of the muskrat. And it makes her want to find the mink because she knows if she finds the mink, she gets a muskrat or a brown rat or something she likes. We do the same thing when we're finding my little girls. Now that's plenty, that's plenty of a reward, probably a little longer than we needed to. But, that's a good girl, yeah. That's a good girl, yeah. That's a good girl. So, um, if we would have just let her run it around on her own, it wouldn't take very long before she'd have a raw nose. So we wouldn't be able to do it very often. Do it once, give her a week or two to heal up. Do it once, give her a week or two to heal up. But by rolling it myself, I could do this every day, twice a day if I wanted to, and she's not going to get a rub raw nose. Now, you guys remember when she was little, we used food as a reward. The reason was because she wasn't that excited to play this kind of game. But now that she's all turned on and excited, this is a much better reward than food. You know, she's not that excited to get food. She loves food, but not this much. And this is a much bigger reward. So you want to reward a dog with the best reward possible, the highest value reward possible. And as you can tell, this is a lot higher reward for her than eating. But if we tried this three or four months ago, it wouldn't have been. She's not as interested. But now she's more mature, she's super excited, super anxious, super high drive. And uh, that's why we do things the way we do it. No, drop, drop. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Drop. Bindi, drop. Bindi, drop. Drop. Bindi drop, Bindi drop, Bindi drop, drop, drop. Oh, daddy get girl. No, drop. Daddy get girl. Daddy get girl. Okay. Oh, daddy get girl. Yeah. Oh, daddy get girl. Yeah. Oh, daddy get girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, daddy get girl. Yeah. Daddy get girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. We're gonna start what I was just doing. We're done for today. She's had more than enough. But we're gonna start making that part of the training. She needs to learn to control herself well and drive, which right now she doesn't know how to do. We purposefully waited to teach her to control herself because we want her crazy like this, crazy for the prey. But now she's getting mature enough, we're gonna start teaching her to control herself while she's in that high, high drive state. That's good. But you don't want to start teaching her self-control until she's going totally bonkers like this. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, drop. Drop. 
Bindi, drop. Bindi, drop. 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 As you can carry this. As you can carry As you can carry Good girl. This is off limits. The muskrat is game on. <laughs> She's a good little pup, man. Man, I'm excited about this puppy. I'll tell you what. She is, without a doubt, the coolest puppy I've ever raised. I've raised some pretty cool puppies. I mean, also was an awesome pup. Shirni, obviously, was an amazing little pup. Um, I don't think I've ever been as excited about a puppy as I am right now about little Miss Bindi. Little Bindi Spike, man, she is awesome. She loves to use her nose and seems to be pretty good at it. She's super high drive, yet also super, super in tune to me and doing what I want. And man, she's just gorgeous little dog. She's seeming like she's gonna stay small like I was hoping for. Um, at this point, she could very easily be under 30 pounds as an adult. You never know. I mean, she weighed just under 22 pounds when she was six months. And her chest was 18 and a half inches around. Why that matters is, the, you know, the weight, it, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. What really matters is how wide a dog is around the chest as far as the size of hole it can fit in. To give you an idea of how big 18 and a half inches is, Leia is 18 and a quarter inch. So she has almost the same uh, circumference of her chest as Leia. And um, at the time that she had the same, almost the same circumference, she was just a little bit heavier than Leia. So pretty cool. You know, at six months old, she could be wrapping up her growth and you know, she won't be much bigger than this or she might be just getting started and she's gonna grow you know, clear up to mid thirties for all we know. But I'm hoping, really hoping she stays, you know, upper twenties. Super excited about this pup, man. She's got a nice physique, long athletic legs, nice tight little chest for a pit bull. Uh, just gorgeous little dog. It'll be interesting to see how she fills out though. A lot of times dogs go through different growth stages and, and they, as puppies, can look very different from the way they do as an adult, so. Only time will tell how she ends up, but man, her personality is awesome. She is a fun little pup. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with YouTube censorship. They've got some serious censorship issues going on in YouTube and their policies are constantly changing. So I created the Mink Man's Exclusive Club, where I can share these exclusive videos as well as give you guys a more behind the scenes look at our lives and how we train our animals. In YouTube, you guys see one or two videos a week, whereas I'm typically posting anywhere from three to six videos a week on my Mink Man's Exclusive Club. Now this club is more than just videos. People can ask me questions directly. They could even send me private messages. I can also share interesting stories that maybe I didn't capture on video. I can share interesting statistics on my different mink or dogs and really just give you guys an inside look on what we do and on my animals' lives. 
I really appreciate you following me here on YouTube, but if you want to get a behind the scenes look and be able to watch these exclusive videos that YouTube censors out, you'll need to join us on Mink Man's exclusive club.